What's up everybody? This is Wills with Windows and Wheels Auto Detailing and today we are going to go through with you on how to do a maintenance wash. We've got a perfect subject. Once again my Camaro, it is filthy, covered in bugs and looks like crap so you're going to actually get to see what it is like to clean a dirty car. I want to go through with you with the chemicals first. So first to, I guess it would be to my right, hopefully to your left, we're going to go through with the uh, tire and rim cleaning. So you have your basic degreaser. This is mixed uh, one part chemical, four parts water. This is going to be for your uh, rims and for your fender wells. Iron X, best wheel cleaner in the world, period. Of course, you can see I got tons of bugs splattered up here. Much murder went on there. We're going to use the 3D bug remover. Same thing. This is diluted down one to four. And then just for scrubbing the tires, we have nylon bristle brush and wheel woolies for cleaning back behind the rims. That's going to be our first step. Second step is going to be cleaning the actual paint. So aside from actually rinsing it down, we're going to be using CarPro Reset. And this is diluted down one to eight inside of our foam cannon. So about so much soap, the rest of it's water. That's gonna be used to foam down the entire car. And we're gonna be using a microfiber madness and credit mitt. Super soft, super plush, safe on paint, especially if you got a black car. That's an important things to be able to look for. Once we're done with that, we'll be pulling inside and then we'll be going through the final touches of everything. So we have an air compressor in there that we're going to use to blow dry everything. But I'm going to show you kind of a real world thing. If you don't have the Metro Blaster, you can use a Dry Me Crazy. Uh, as I've shown in my touchless wash video before, you can actually dry an entire car the size with one of these towels. And then we're going to be doing a little touch up if you want to do a little extra. We have um, CarPro's Echo 2, and this is actually mixed with a little bit of Reload. So it's going to be good for touching up any water spots, any streaks, and give you a little bit of extra gloss and extra protection on top of it if you're feeling ambitious like that. And then finally, just to address all of your rubber parts, we're just going to do uh, tires today. But we have CarPro's Pearl, and that's going to be diluted down one to two. I'll put all this information down in the description in case you want to go back through it and, and check it out. But these are pretty much the essential parts that you're going to want to use to clean the car. And now we're going to go through and show you how to use all this stuff. gloves because we're all about safety here right Henry yep. <laughs> all right so we're gonna start out with our tires and our rims first we got our wheel bucket this bucket is going to only be used for your wheels obviously you don't want to take nasty water like this and go and wash your paint with it that's where paint swirls come from not a good thing it helps keep us in business and everything but you don't want to do that to your car so we're gonna start out and first thing we're gonna do is put, actually put our water in it we have all of our wheel tools in here we're gonna do water first you're gonna fill it up about three quarters of the way the reason that we're gonna do water first is because if you did soap first and you started spraying water in it, you're gonna get a whole bunch of suds up really quickly and you're not gonna have very much water actually in the bucket itself. So we're just gonna have this bad boy come up about three quarters, like so. You can mix whatever type of soap you want with it, honestly. We just like to do a couple pumps of Dawn soap in it. Again, because we're dealing with grease on the tires, Dawn has degreaser agents in it. It works great. Now we're going to go back. You can use your hose or whatever, and we're going to create some suds. And spray Isaiah in the process. Now we have beautiful soapy water. So again, as I said earlier, we're going to start out with our tires and our rims first. We have a degreaser for our rubber pieces and our fender wells because that's plastic in there. Then we have Iron X, which the bottle is a little bit used. We actually use our chemicals here, so they're not all pretty. But we're going to use the Iron X for our wheel faces, our wheel barrels, and our caliper area. Now you notice, even though my car is pretty dirty right now, the rubber is not all browned out. Um, and it also doesn't have like kind of that thick residue buildup like you see with some cars. Uh, a lot of car washes and, and certain detailers even will use really heavy silicone type tire dressings. And when you use that over and over and over again, you get this thick sludgy buildup, which is almost impossible to get off all the way. It's like peeling caulking off your tires. So you don't want to use that. Um, Pearl, great water-based product, protects really well. And then again, even after almost three weeks of not washing, they're dull, but they're not browning. So they're gonna be pretty easy to clean up. So we're gonna start out first with getting some degreaser onto the rubber faces. That's gonna allow it to set a little bit and help to break down the stuff that we're cleaning. Just try to get even coverage all the way through. The other part to note, do everything while it's nice and cool out. We're gonna hit the fender wells as well back in here as much as we can possibly reach. Yeah, as the car is lowered, so it's a little difficult. 
So this is going to help to start break down the grime and such in there. And again, doing everything while the surface is cool, that allows you time. Now we're not rushing. I can actually talk while I'm doing this without looking like an idiot. Next part we're going to do is all of the wheel faces. So as you can see, these are fairly dirty. You don't need a ton of iron X to be able to do this, but you do want to cover the surface evenly. If you happen to hit an area and not another area, when you go to clean it, it's not going to clean off evenly. You can see it actually changing colors. So that's actually your brake dust dissolving there, which saves us a ton of time. The other nice part about Iron X is it's actually safe to use on all types of wheel faces. So we've done matte wheels, um, polished aluminum like so, uh, clear coated, you're fine either way. So you can see it's doing the majority of the work for us already, all the color changing. Uh, if you watched my touchless wash video, you saw where I can actually go through and just rinse this down and it'll actually clean off the majority of the grind there. But we're going to do things the correct way. We're going to go through and actually take all of our tools and get in there. So I usually like to work from back coming forward. So we'll get in there first with our wheel woolies. Nice open water there. And we're gonna go back here behind the barrels. And you can see even after just a couple of swipes how much silver is starting to show through in there. And we're just gonna follow it all the way around. Now you wanna dunk your wheel woolly back into the soapy water every couple of spots. So that way it's filling up with soap and water and it's actually gonna help to wash a lot of that grime away rather than just agitating it and letting it sit in the same spot. These are nice and easy wheels to clean because you got nice big open spaces. The only spot that's a little bit tight on this one is behind the wheel caliper. So we do actually have two inch wheel woolies. This one's actually got a little bit of an angle to it, but they're a little bit thinner and it allows you to get back there, reach behind the tight spots without getting your tool caught up into the area that you're trying to clean. Just got that all set. Nylon bristle brush. So this is just gonna be for our rubber here. And I'll we'll usually do about a quarter of the tire. Scrub it real good. Try not to hit your wheel face because you don't want to scratch up your wheel face anymore than it already gets when you're driving around. So do about a quarter of the tire, re-dunk, get another quarter of the tire and you can see all that brown loosening up already, which is perfect. That's what we want to see. Last part of the tire here. If you're dealing with especially dirty tires, something that hasn't been cleaned in a long time, you may have to do this process a couple of times. But if you're regularly maintaining your car, even if you're only, again, I haven't cleaned my car in about three weeks now, just for the purpose of this video, this is all that you're gonna need to do to be able to actually get it pretty clean. The last spot, which I forgot to show in the products that we're using, but we're actually gonna use a microfiber sponge, and that's just gonna be used to clean all your wheel faces. Some people will use brushes, which is fine. Um, I personally like the sponge though because it, again it holds more soap and water and it's going to allow all that grime that we're cleaning off to rinse away as we're agitating it. Now some areas you're going to have to use a brush which I'll show in a second but for your nice big faces for the sake of time and efficiency and actually does a better job as well um, these sponges work great. The only part that you usually have to use a brush on is in your lug nut areas. Now you can use boar's hair brushes, you can use, some people use paint brushes. Favorite one that I found is the, see if we can clean it off, this is the Atlasta soft tip brush. And it's actually a parked cleaning brush, but the bristles are very soft and they're bunched together really well. This one's about four years old. Yeah, we've been using this for a long time and I think we've maybe lost three or four bristles out of it, but it fits in perfectly around here. You can just go in there, twist it, twist it, and just follow them all the way around. And if you happen to have wheels that do have tight areas or if you have pieced wheels, this tool works great to be able to get in there. Sometimes I'll hit up around here, around this little bit. And if you do need to get in to get the calipers at all, you can. But for the most part, when I was in there with the wheel woolies, it's able to clean that. Now that your tire and your rim is done, we're just gonna get up in here with the fender well. Sponge usually works best because you're able to get a little more pressure up in here. You do have to get a little elbow deep. Some cars, this will not be possible to do. But for mine, it's, Semi possible to do. Hashtag lowered car. Hash car, yeah, hashtag lowered car. This is where we wish we were doing the Rolls Royce back there. We can actually crawl under the car and do it if you wanted. And for areas that you're not able to reach, you can just take your wheel woolly again, go back in here real easy. You got nice plastic handles so you don't have to worry about scratching anything. Agitate a little bit, and bingo. 
you are done. So we're gonna use a pressure washer to rinse all this down. You can use a hose, you can use whatever you want. We use spotless water, which again, makes things a lot easier when you got really hard water like here in Arizona. We just wanna rinse all your chemical out really thoroughly. And that's that. Don't worry about if you see a little rust on the faces of your rotors. Some people freak out about that. That's just the nature of the beast. As soon as you drive the car and brake a couple of times, life will be fine. It's gonna wear that right off but that is obviously unprotected metal. It's bare metal. You hit it with water, you see a little rust. So we got this one done. We're gonna continue around the rest of the car now, hit the rest of our wheels. About halfway through that, we're gonna take that bug remover I showed you earlier, hit the front areas, the areas that are affected so it has a little dwell time, and then we'll start showing you how to remove that once we get it into the paint. Now we're gonna to head to the rest of the wheels. between this and all-purpose cleaners they actually have an enzyme in this that's going to help to break down the proteins of the bugs basically works a little bit better so we're going to go ahead and soak this down really well again make sure you do it while it's cool because you don't want this stuff to actually stain your paint if you let it hit the surface while it's hot when we're going to environment like this though you can soak it down really good makes your life a lot easier all right so we're letting those bug uh those bugs kind of set there for a second we'll go ahead and pre-rinse the rest of the vehicle this is just to get the loose dirt off of here So that should have given us about a minute on the set time for the bug remover. In case you haven't noticed, it really helps to have a second hand out. <laughs> so that way you don't get your cord stuck up around every tire and rim and everything around there. I'm sorry, wheel all the way around the car. Now we're just gonna pressure wash these off. You can see most of them will just come off just from the pressure washer and the chemical. All right, so next thing we're gonna do here is we're going to foam the car up. So we actually have a foam cannon. This is gonna just connect to our pressure washer here. This is actually gonna shoot the soap onto the car. If you do not have a foam cannon, don't freak out. Just get two buckets. You're gonna fill one bucket up with water and put your soap of choice into it and have a second bucket with just straight water. And I always recommend putting a grit guard, which is one of these guys, in the bottom of your bucket. That's just gonna keep the dirt and such that you actually rinse out into your bucket. Uh, at the bottom so that way when you take your mitts you're not getting it full of dirt and such. We're gonna go ahead now and foam this baby up. I'm staying right behind you just so yeah. all right. All right, got everything all foamed up. Next thing we're gonna do is gonna have Henry over here give us a hand with everything. If you can get two people to do this, especially in Arizona, it makes it a lot quicker. Just make sure both of you are on the same page as far as technique wise goes. The other thing, Grid Guard, they have a universal pad washer cart here, which is what this is made for, but we actually use it for our washing. Connect a couple bottle holders here and it's like having everything that you possibly need to be able to wash your car all in one spot. So we got our uh, Incrediments in here. We're gonna start from the windshield and we're gonna kind of do this section by section. Well, I'll explain a little bit as we go along, but we're gonna basically mirror each other. So this is just water that we're doing on this since we already have the foam up here. You can add a little soap to it if you'd like. Main thing here is you wanna be gentle. There is no scrubbing that you really want to do here. You wanna just kind of loosely or lightly agitate the dirt. If you have a protection on your paint, be it, in my case, I have a ceramic coating, I have Secor's Finest on my car, it's gonna help to loosen that dirt up a lot easier. Same thing with the bugs and such. Even if you just have a typical uh, paint sealant of some sort on your paint, it's gonna also help a lot with being able to loosen up the bugs, the dirt, the grime, without you actually having to scrub so much. You notice we're working top to bottom, so we're doing our grimiest stuff last. 
Reason for that is we don't want to take all this grimy stuff on the bottom here and take it up to the top part of the car that's not as dirty. So when we get to this point, we're going to come back to our bucket, rinse all this stuff out of here. Now we're going to hit the roof and carry that all the way back to the rear bumper and then continue going panel by panel, top to bottom. So to be safe here, we wanted to record this point and explain to you, we are actually going to rinse the soap off of the car now, just in case you didn't understand that. <laughs> Proceed, Daddy. <laughs> Right, guys so we're gonna go ahead and blow off the car now we use the metro blaster this is actually an eight horsepower version you see the two switches up there it's a big bad boy these things are built like tanks so if you don't have one i would recommend getting one if you're really a car enthusiast danny's going to be blowing off everything i'm going to go behind her with the drive me crazy so the big bath mat towel we were talking about earlier again super absorbent super soft we're going to go ahead and kick this on now and kill the sound and get going The majority of the car off the main thing is to get you know the bulk of the water get your cracks and crevices when you're drying a couple things to keep note of is you'll actually want to fold your towel this will give you a few different surfaces to fold with and it'll help it to absorb a little bit more evenly i usually will just go in half or you can even go in a quarter if you'd like the other thing is you'll want to go just like when we were washing top to bottom even though we were super careful just in case we missed anything we want to be able to find out now so far i've dried about half the car and we're still looking really good so we're done drying the car completely now essentially if you wanted to be done right now you could but we like to go the extra mile a little bit here so we're going to take carpro echo here and this is actually uh it comes in a concentrate so you'll dilute it down with uh, water for the most part all the instructions come with it and we actually act like to add a little bit of car pro reload to it which is going to give us some protection and some extra gloss and this is just going to work essentially like a detail spray but with protective properties so if you're in a still environment you can spray it directly onto the onto the panel or you can spray it onto the towel whichever way you prefer and you're just going to kind of outline a square or rectangle whichever the case may be and it's actually really really smooth really slick and you'll apply flip your towel over buff down any streaks you have. It gives it that much, much, much shinier look to it even after the wash. So we're gonna just continue along. You're not gonna need a whole lot of this product. It spreads pretty well. And just kinda outline the areas that you're doing. Flip again, buff down, rinse and repeat throughout the car. So one other thing to note when you're, again, using any type of towels on your paint, just like we had a really soft plush towel to dry with, with that microfiber madness driving me crazy. When you're doing your echo or any type of touching on the paint, you want something that's nice and plush. You can see the fibers on this are really soft. It's got silk edging. Uh, one that would be even better is a completely edgeless border. And that's just gonna again, help to cut down on any scratching or marring or light micro marring that might happen on the paint when you're actually wiping it. The other nice part about this is since we're actually are absorbing a little bit of liquid when we're spraying with this, is because it's really plush, it's gonna be able to basically do the entire car with one towel. That's what I was able to just do right now. So now that we got the wheels nice and clean, everything's pulled in, we air dried it. Uh, we're gonna do the last touches on the wheels. We've got a couple more products here to use at the end of the cycle. We're gonna be using same thing we just used on the paint. This is going to be used on the wheel faces, so the Echo 2. And then we're going to be using the CarPro Pearl, and this diluted down uh, one part product to two parts water, so it gives it a dark look, but it's not that sh super shiny. Uh, the other nice part about it, there's not a lot of tire sling. I actually have never had tire sling with this, so this is the reason we use this product. We're going to start out with the rubber first. Um, I'm going to actually spray it onto the sponge just to help to eliminate any overspray onto the rim. And same thing, just like when we were scrubbing the tire, I'm going to do about a quarter of the tire. And this is just a regular sponge that you can use. Um, you can, some people do microfiber. I just like the foam sponge. 
something a little bit smaller, especially if you've got low profile wheels. And you just kind of work the product in. You can kind of see already it darkens it, but it's not that super shiny, glossy look to it. We're just going to continue around the rest of the wheel with this. And again, the other nice part is it's going to make it easy to clean up when you come next time to wash your car because it's a solid product and your tires aren't going to get all brown and, you know, grimy looking in between washes unless you off-road it. And needless to say, I don't off-road this thing very often, just once in a while. <laughs> so now that we got the wheels done with, or the, I'm sorry, the tires done with, we're going to go ahead and take care of the wheels. So we have a microfiber madness slogger here, which is a nice general purpose type of a towel. Same thing, you can either spray it on the rim or the wheel, or you can spray it directly to the towel. And there's just a little bit of grime left in there. And that's all we're doing is touching this up and then applying this product to it again is going to help the brake dust to remove even easier when we go to wash it next time. You don't really need a lot. Uh, you can use this on pretty much any surface. The only one you'll want to really be careful on is a matte surface because you don't want to make it too glossy. But if you have clear coated or aluminum or polished faces like this, it's fine for it. If you really want to get into it, you can feel free to get deep into the barrels, but for the most part, they're actually pretty clean after this. Last tip, if you're going to get into your lug nut area, you see we got a little bit of dirt off of there. Spray a little bit of your product on your folded corner here, and that'll stuff nicely into the lug nut area, and then you'll just turn it, and that'll just get the last little bit of grime off of there. You can see that there. You can just kind of repeat that through the rest of the lug nuts. All right, so got those done. We're just going to go ahead and finish up the rest of the tires and wheels now. Last thing we'll do for final touches is your windows and your door jams, and we will be ready for Last that. step, the windows, of course, windows and wheels, right? So we just have primarily uh, spotless water here and a little bit of uh, 3D window cleaner. Towels, as Levi from the Rag Company said, is sort of a personal preference. So we have one that's actually very silky smooth type. You can use pretty much anything that's clean and that you're using just on your windows. If you take a tire towel and you go and use it on your freaking car on the windows, guess what? You're gonna get streaks. As far as product goes, you're just gonna use a little bit because obviously the glass is clean now from the actual washing process and we've dried it. I will usually go in circular motions just to get any residue that may be left on there off. And then we'll flip it, a little bit more liquid and now we're just buffing down the last little bit of streaks. Finishing touches, we'll just circle around, finish this stuff up. And then we're going to leave it to Mr. Isaiah to get the beauty shots. Somebody's here. <laughs> 